are these people? June, uh, I think it's June 8th, right? Let me make sure. Yep, June 8th um, was the anniversary of Israel bombing a U.S. naval vessel of the USS Liberty. So we're going to take some time to remember the Liberty. You know, Memorial Day was not that long ago. Um, so this is out of Sheer Post. A man named Wayne Stiles writes for Medium, right? Um, was also one of the helicopter pilots uh, for the rescue mission here. So he'll get to that. But he writes, don't forget the U.S. Liberty's dead and wounded. Readers celebrating and remembering veterans on Memorial Day and on D-Day should not overlook the sacrifice of the dead and wounded on board the U.S. Liberty on June 8, 1967. So he continues that he's grateful to those that have read my previous stories about the sneak attack made on the USS Liberty by Israel, an attack which killed 34 people and wounded 171 Americans. I am continually surprised at the number of people that are not aware of Israel's duplicity and treachery visited on an unarmed, plainly marked and neutral ship off the United States while it operated in international waters. Or earlier stories are listed as follows. I have his article in the description below for you lovely people. If you want to go click that link and go to the links of his other stories, which will be right after as follows in his article. But he writes, the dead and wounded of the USS Liberty didn't go down fighting in the sense they were in a war with a known adversary. Yes, many went down fighting while defending their ship against a false flag, intentional attack by their supposed ally, Israel. So, there it is. That's the USS Liberty before it was uh, attacked. That is it after it was attacked. So, this is from one of his previous articles. He says, on June 8, 1967, the USS Liberty was cruising in the Mediterranean in international waters ordered to monitor the Israeli-Arab War. In the morning, the ship was circled a dozen times by low-flying Nord propeller boxcars at mast height with Israeli designation. The planes flew at mast height. The men on the ship could see the teeth of the pilots as they smiled. They waved at them. The ship was flying a 4-7 American flag. Four foot, seven foot American flag. It stood straight out in a clear, breezy day. The ship had large letter designation on the bow GTR 5. The attack by unmarked Israeli planes. Israel say the attack was an accident. The ship was an Egyptian horse carrier, less than one half the size of the USS Liberty, commenced in the afternoon in international waters at the attack with cannon, rockets, napalm, and torpedo fire. The torpedo boats came back and machine gunned the life rafts that they were thrown overboard. A war crime, according to international law, 34 men were killed and 171 wounded out of a crew of 291. This day by the Israelis, the men on board, they ship, they call it murder. Captain Ward Boston was given one week to conduct an investigation of the attack. Before he died, Ward Boston signed an affidavit Thing the attack on the USS Liberty was deliberate. Many American intelligence servicemen have come forward stating they overheard the Israelis identifying the ship as American. I do not believe the Israeli government. I believe it is lying. So there's some of the bullet holes, as you can see there. Right? Some more damage alongside the edge of the ship. Um, right. But I found... Did I find... Uh, where is it? Well, no, it's missing. Hold on, I can find it. Um, any thoughts before we? Have you ever heard about this, Colin? Um, mm -hmm. I think we brought it up some before, but um, let me go to Twitter. I know Joe's brought it up. I think Alex Jones has brought it up of all people. Um. But if I just put in Twitter, USS, or do I already have it? Probably already have it. Uh, I think it's in this. Look. This one. Hold on. Yeah, all right. I found it. 
So I found this. Um, this is Ron Gransky. A why are you covered up, Colin? Kind of nice. Ron Gratsky survived the Israeli attack on the American ship, the USS Liberty. So we're going to hear his account real quick. I'm uh, alive, alive from uh, the USS Liberty. Uh, I served on that ship in uh, 1967 when it was attacked by the Israelis, uh, so, supposedly by accident, uh, in neutral waters off the Sinai Peninsula. 34 of my crewmen were killed and 171 wounded. Uh, it's now 50 years later. I'm still alive, and it's Memorial Day, and I always think about the men who died, and I still see some of the crewmen. Uh, we were attacked by um, Mirage jets. They strafed us and dropped napalm, and there was four torpedo boats, Israeli torpedo boats, circling us, and they fired five torpedoes total. One hit, hit a hole in the side of the ship, 50 feet by 30 feet roughly. Uh, we had, for weapons on our ship, 50 caliber machine guns, two forward and one uh, two midship. All the men in those, those gun mounts were killed. And uh, our torpedo, the torpedo hit in the communication spaces, and many men died wounded from there, uh, supposedly by an accident. I don't believe it was an accident. We in intercept a lot of messages that Idr Israel had sent, and um, some that uh, were highly classified at, time, at the time, and were, furthered, were, were sent further to our government who in turn acted or didn't act on what we said. And uh, I know the Israelis, uh, this is my opinion, uh, planned the attack on us, and they know it too. And uh, I believe our government knows it too. So uh, if anybody wants to do anything about it, you know right where I live. And if not, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I mean, he tells you, you can come find me. Um, well, yeah, any, any thoughts? I mean, I just wonder why this story is not talked about. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. we're dry here. Um, because you think in light of everything, I think in light of this, you know, especially this happened in 1967, you would think that the U.S. would have more pause to be involved in Israel, but nah. Well, we'll, we'll get yeah. to some of that, um, why that might be the case. Um, so, right. this, um, we're going to go back to uh, Wayne Stiles, right? So, Wayne, Wayne writes that he piloted the first helicopter evacuation mission to the USS Liberty. The morning following the attack, the ship, which had been hit below decks by an Israeli torpedo, also showed over 11, 1,100 hits from rockets and burn marks from the napalm Israel dropped on the ship the previous afternoon. But DuPont must have gave him some, some new stuff. So nowhere to land, so we hovered, bringing up wounded with our hoist. While over the ship, I had the continuous view of blood sloshing back and forth in the forward gun tub as the ship rolled. Evacuation went on all that day. Survivors reported that all their radio transmissions were jammed, including the international distress region. In violation of international law, they also reported that napalm was dropped on the ship, causing fires. Firefighters were then fired upon by Israeli aircraft and torpedo boats. Medical personnel administering to the wounded were also fired upon as they frantically treated bullet and burn wounds. The outrages didn't stop there. When the captain ordered lifeboats to be launched in fear of the ship sinking, the Israeli attackers strafed them, sunk them, and then fired and damaged lifeboats still in racks on the ship, again, in violation of international law. 
For their efforts at reporting what they saw, the surviving crew members were labeled anti-Semites and racist by Israel and its supporters, many in the United States. The Liberty did manage to get a distress signal from an antenna strung by a brave crewman while under fire by Israeli aircraft. The USS American, my ship, and the USS Saratoga launched support aircraft, some of which were armed with nuclear missiles. Since Israel had led us to believe that it was Egypt that attacked the Liberty, we were ready to use nuclear weapons on that country. When the Liberty refused to sink, the Israelis cried mea culpa and said it was a terrible mistake. The aircraft was recalled by President Johnson, who said, I don't care if the ship goes to the bottom, I won't embarrass our allies. The planes were recalled with only six minutes away from Cairo while the Liberty was still under attack. And so the cover-up began with the United States in full cooperation with Israel. Survivors and their families were threatened with military justice and imprisonment if they spoke of the incident. Media coverage was curtailed and crafted to support the mistake. The ship was forced to steam halfway across the Mediterranean to Malta so repairs could be made in secret, away from the prying and questioning eyes of the media, and all done to deceive the American people as their actions of their ally Israel the nature and duration of the attack was minimized. The investigation was minimized and excluded the accounts of most of the witnesses. What is hard to imagine is that Israel then enshrined the wheel and the bell of the torpedo boat, the one that almost sank our ship and killed 25 NSA personnel below decks into their naval museum. Even harder to understand is our asking the Israeli ambassador whether Israel minded if we awarded the USS Liberty's heroic Captain McGonagall the Congressional Medal of Honor. Captain McGonagall, though severely wounded in one of his legs, stayed on what was left of the ship's bridge until he guided it safely to the Malta shipyard. Alas, the cover-up has continued for 57 years. The anniversary is tomorrow. Please remember these guys support the continual calls for investigation required under U.S. law. Again, that was the 8th. So try to keep that on your calendars for next year. But I sure. also wanted to do what? Dave. I said what? sure. Sure. 